it does not look like um, the physicist philosopher Paul Adrian Maurice Dirac's monopole has been discovered in nature. It may have been theorized, though, what it is. It, in, in a sense, it's the singularity or the appearance of the singularity uh, to us or to physicists today as the origin of the Big Bang. Because at that one moment, all magnetism is concentrated in a single point that is now the dual polarity. Uh, but once the Big Bang occurs, then the universe has ever, all magnetism in nature uh, appears to have dual polarity. So Sternglass's theory, uh, in, uh, as he lays it out in the origin of the universe uh, before the Big Bang, it's a reversal of his title actually, it's on the or or before the Big Bang on the origin of the universe, or the origins, he says, of the universe. Notice he uses the plural, origins of the universe, because the Big Bang uh, singularity, which is the beginning of the universe, is only a Big Bang singularity embedded in an atom whose singularity emerges from the statistics, just as um, in quantum mechanics today, if physicists are looking at a particular atomic process and an, an electron or a neutron emerges from a proton, and a proton actually uh, absorbs a certain amount of electron energy, and then when it actually reaches a certain point, um, as Sternglass details in that particular book I just referred to, the, there is a certain event, the proton electron spins around the proton in all orbits, really, in all space-time points that are possible for it to, to spin around the nucleus. But in one particular orbit, it actually captures the orbiting electron. And it captures the orbiting electron in a certain cycle, which leads up to the compression of energy inside the proton nucleus of hydrogen until it reaches that quantum level of energy that produces the statistical likelihood, and even at a certain point, the necessity of it forcing out of the proton the, new, the neutron. So then you get all the other elements of the periodic table. But in micro, this process is the very beginning of the universe. The very beginning of the universe is the simple element proton electron positron. And so you get the electron moving in that way, Sternglass says, for 16 trillion years. And it moves that fast around the nucleus for 16 trillion years and then it forces out the neutron and all the other elements and then you get the Big Bang. So at that moment of the 16 trillion year process, you actually have a magnetic monopole. And at that moment of creation, when the, when the hydrogen atom is absorbing the electron to the highest energy that it can absorb the electron, that's what creates the singularity or that moment that appears to physics today to be the very beginning of the whole universe. But notice that Sternglass says origins because the, that origin that occurred once is actually occurring again. So Dressler's astronomy might have actually captured that reformation process now in a selected group of galaxies that will lead to the beginning of the universe from the very origin again. But it will form over a large period of time as the matter comes closer and closer together and then reaches that highest gravitational point where it actually captures or pulls into it all mass around it and then recreates the cosmos once again. So he, I think he, in his book, The Great Attractor, had actually managed to see that a group of galaxies now, after the process has been gone through, is actually beginning to recreate the universe because it's forming a monopolarity in that very region of space-time that he's uh, observed with um, other uh, great astronomers, astrophysicists, cosmologists, and particle physicists. Sternglass himself was trying to prove this 
with respect to his own model of the universe, um, which should lead in the future, should lead to our being able to formulate a periodic table of the galaxies and show that there's a harmonic of energies that goes from the very origin or what appears to be the origin to us because remember Stringlass said origins because it had happened prior to and it will happen again and it will happen again and it will happen again and it will never cease according to Sternglass it will always happen so we live for Sternglass in his theory we live in an eternal horizon we do not live in a universe that is ending by the, by the separation of matter from the galaxies because as Dressler's astronomy captured, that's not true. There's an exception to it. And that exception is beginning to recreate the, the original monopole. And this is why Paul Dirac predicted in 1920 or sometime between 1926 and 28 that there must be monopole a single polar magnet that has only one pole because that's the energy that keeps recreating the cosmos. If the cosmos weren't that way, if it were actually separated into a dual, every, every magnet, magnetizing thing in nature were two poles, then a different kind of process would take place. Then it would be possible, if that were the case, it would be possible for the cosmos to recontract and then never expand again. But since it always originates out of that single, that single polarity concentrates all the matter in the cosmos, which is only at one point, so that there's, no, there's not enough space there, to put it colloquial, colloquially, colloquially, there's not enough space time there for there to be two, two um, a dipolarity or a bipolarity, because if there were a dipolarity, two poles, the separation between electron and positron wouldn't, would not have allowed the beginning of matter to differentiate into all the galaxies that we see today. So in actuality, I think, if, I, if, I'm, if my reading of Dressler is right, he discovered, he discovered that our cosmos is beginning to remake itself again. And it was a very important discovery. It was probably one of the, it'll probably over time in this century, it might be recognized as one of the most important discoveries to have been made. And if he wrote his book before 2000, to, be, to have been made in the last century. And I predict it. 